Welcome back, you amazing wire student person. We are hitting tutorial number 10 with this video. This means that you have a solid understanding of how wire works by now. This also means it's time to incorporate Arena and Avenue into your patching. This tutorial is here to teach you how you can make Arena and Avenue work with wire. Note that I am using Arena and I will be mentioning Arena throughout the video, but everything I do here works with Avenue as well. This tutorial is all about making your wire patches interactive in Arena. For this, we need in and out nodes, or I.O. nodes if you're being particularly nerdy about it. All the nodes you see here are the I.O. nodes as making of this video. If you're watching this in the future, there might be already some new I.O. nodes. The ones on the left should look familiar to you, and you have seen me use them already. The ones on the right allow for the use of MIDI, OSC, FFT, and slices in wire. These nodes will have their own tutorial in the near future, but for now just know that they exist as we focus on the I.O. nodes on the left. The fact that the node has the word IN in its name means that it will show up in the Arena interface once it's been loaded as a source or an effect. They will also be named Float In, Color In, and Bool In, so make sure to change the names to something more fitting. The Texture In node is the only exception to this. This node will not show up in the UI. Let's have a look at these I.O. nodes. The float in node will allow the user to input a floating point value for the parameter. The value has to be between its minimum and maximum value, set in the inspector. Note that you can also disable min and max values if needed. Everything we have just discussed also applies to the integer in node, but then well with whole numbers. The boolean in node will give the user a boolean to toggle between. And that's it, nothing really to write home about. And the same can be said for the trigger in node, which will show up as a button in the arena interface. Upon being trigger, it sends us a trigger which you can use to, well, trigger other nodes. The color in node gives the user control over the color. In the arena interface, the color picker will show up, where you can use HSB and RGB sliders or exit your palette presets. The string in allows the user to write something that can be processed in the patch. And lastly, the choice in node gives you a drop down menu. No need to explain this one further, as we have already did this in the previous tutorial. Before we move on to making some patches, we need to talk about categories. When you save your patch and want to use it in Arena, it needs to be set to a category. You can find the category of the patch by clicking on a blank space on the canvas, navigating to the inspector and selecting the right category from the drop-down menu. And that's all you need to know about the basic I.O. nodes and categories. In the next few clips, I'll talk you through a mixer, a source, and an effect that I've made, and explain how the I.O. nodes interact with that patch. All right, we'll start with this source that I've made. Uh, for this patch, I wanted to create a source that, um, like a shape that is not possible to make in Arena. So we start out here in the top. I'll disable the preview monitor over here, stretch out a little bit. Uh, we start out with a cross, some spokes, a rectangle, and a rhombus, and they are all put into the union node. And the union node combines the shapes, as we've learned in the shapes tutorial, um, and it's at stairs mode. So this gives the stepping heavy, like blocky edges on the shape, and then I create an edge out of that as well. Uh, this, gets, this gets transformed. I'll show you how that works in a bit. Uh, goes to a shape render, the shape render turns the shape into a texture, so shape out, into the texture, into the shape render, texture out. Then we multiply it with a gradient. So in a previous tutorial um, about logic, I said that uh, logic nodes can be used for texture operations. The same is true for math. Um, you don't really know how to, need to know how this works. Uh, just know that when you send in a completely white texture and apply a colored texture, multiply it with a color texture, um, it will overlay it. So we have this gradient, and as you can see, it slowly fades out from yellow to red. And a texture out. You need it to have a texture out when creating a source. Now, as far as the I.O. goes, uh, I give the user control over the amount of steps can increase or decrease the amount of steps used by the union node. Just create a simple uh, integer in this case, because steps are uh, whole, you don't have a half step. Um, 
So this is an integer in node that I renamed to steps. It runs from uh, one of zero to eight with this sweet spot, I think around two. Um, and I think the steps node would go way higher. Yeah, it goes up to a hundred, but it just didn't look good. Uh, as you are designing your own sources, you have to feel like, what is the sweet spot? Uh, then the step size, that how big are these steps? We have control over that as well. Normally that has to be a value between uh, zero and one, but I find, find that values above, let's see, 0 0.4, well, anything above 0 0.4 is kind of useless. So what I did is I just take a slider that goes from 0 to 1, and I divide it by 2.5, and it gives me a nice range from 0 to 0, uh, from, yeah, from 0 to 0 0.4 uh, that is usable. Uh, I prefer to keep all my parameters where relevant from 0 to 1, as it just looks ugly in the interface. I personally find that looks ugly if you have parameters that go from 0 to 0 0.34, because that's the sweet spot, or don't have a sweet spot at all, uh, that half of the parameter is useless. Like I like to keep it as usable as possible, and you can make your patches as user-friendly as need to be. Uh, same goes here, uh, the thickness of the, of the edge. Let me preview the whole shape again. So this is the thickness of the edge node. So the edge creates from this solid thing, it creates an outline. Um, and I want to give the user control over it. Again, the slider, which is a float, goes from 0 to 1. I divide it by 10, so I get a range from 0 to 0 0.1, because I find that the sweet spot is in between there, even though the thickness can have a value up to 1 but it makes no sense in this case to give it a one. Uh, I give the user control over the scale, which is a simple um, a simple float again, going from one or from zero to one, and I multiply it by two and a half. So the maximum value that gets out is two and a half, which I think is sort of the max range that is usable in this case. And the same goes for rotation, which just goes from zero to one. And the hub node is here just for cable management. A hub node, a hub node does nothing. Then I have saved it uh, as a source. I gave it a name. And if we move now to Arena, here it is. We have control. Oh, I didn't show that one. Uh, I gave give the user a color A and a color B control over the gradient node. Right. Now we have our interface here. We have in Arena, control over the colors. We can recolor the recolor the thing. Uh, we can create, change the step size, thickness. This is all the stuff we get to play with. And from here on out, you can start applying effects. Maybe the radial cloner. And get some cool, cool visuals going. Scale it up here, rotate it and color scheme, etc. From there, the, the opportunities are endless. One thing to mention before we wrap this up is that the order, the horizontal, no vertical order of the nodes is relevant. As you can see, the colors are at the top of the patch, followed by step, step size, thickness, scale, and rotation. These are the same, that's the same orientation in Arena. If I move the colors way, way down here vertically, and I save my patch. As you can see, the colors are now at the bottom as well. And also, as you can see, you can real-time edit and update um, your patches. You can always, if, if, the, if a source or an effect is a patch, you can always click here and edit the patch. If wire is open, it will load in the patch. If wire is closed, it will boot wire and load up the patch. So that was it for this source. Let's move on to the effect. All right, the second example, this time we're making an effect. Um, to make an effect, you need to have a texture in node and a texture out node, and make sure that you set your category to effect. Uh, instead of using the test card or the wire logo, I am using just a piece of footage that I drag and drop into here because I think it's more, um, 
or it's more realistic of what you what you want to make. So what does this effect do? Well, we create an edge, we edge detect the clip, we auto mask the black out of it, and we allow the user to colorize it. So if you want to have a colored outline, then that's possible. This gets transformed by a scale and an offset, also user defined before getting color offset and all modulated and wiggled around by some square oscillators. I'll touch on that in a bit. And then get mixed back again with the original signal. So the original clip is behind it. Maybe the effect is a bit too much right now. So if we lower the amplitude, maybe lower the strength a little bit. In the case of this clip, we can create a pretty cool outline effect on a clip. As I discussed, uh, we allow the user to set the strength of the, uh, the edge detection, allow the user to pick a color if they want, scale the outline up and down, move the outline around, so you can move the outline if you want to, but not the clip itself. Uh, and then we have this big mess of wires over here. That is quite simple. We have a frequency of the oscillators, just simply this goes from zero to one. Maybe we should up this a little bit. Uh, zero to five, just want to get real chaotic. Yeah. Just give the user the option to do that. Um, so zero to five, which just modulates the frequency of each of these oscillators, turning them up and down. These are square, they only have two values, the plus and the minus variant. Same here, we have an amplitude ranging from uh, zero to 100, so you can get all wacky or get real subtle, that's even too subtle, get a little bit subtle uh, with it, and it modulates all the squares. What I did do to the squares is face offset them, with quite arbitrary random values, so not everything is in sync. If all the squares would be in sync with each other, the entire outline would move around and you wouldn't even see the color offset. Then they are packed into a float two, simply because the color offset wants a flow two, and for each channel. So it requ we require six oscillators, and we pack them into three flow two values for the red, green, and blue value. In the future, you will learn about instancing, and we can slim this, the whole thing down significantly. But for now, um, this is it. Uh, I will remove the original clip, delete that, connect the texture in, now, I don't need to resource anymore, so I can remove this as well. Makes the patch a lot smaller. And then I save it. Make sure it is an effect. Yes. Go to Arena. Oh, I already had it applied. Let's reapply it. And now it's on this clip. And I can play with the strength. Scale, you know, could, could beat sync this. The frequency of the shift. A big amplitude or color of it, change the effect, reduce the amplitude. I prefer this smaller amplitude and give a whole new look to a clip. So, you know, with without, so that's the little effect we made. And finally, we have a mixer patch. A mixer will show up as a transition mode or as a blend mode, you can use either way. And it requires to have two texture in nodes because you're blending or mixing between two textures and a texture out node. Also, you need a video mixer and it's smart to have a float that runs from zero to one. Uh, and just have one parameter. Uh, this will be if you're, use, if you're using a transition phase or you're using the, um, the knob, the blend knob, this is the blend knob. I, re I renamed it Mix just to make it clear for myself. So what is happening here? We have the wire logo. We have the test card going into a video mixer into a texture out. And we want to um, pixelate that. So I have my mix variable, a mix parameter, which does the following. We check, well, let's first start at the bottom. The mix gets multiplied by 64 for the columns and the rows of the pixelate effect. 
and the uh, top texture goes into the pixelate. So it gets pixelated as it gets, gets mixed. But we don't want to keep the pixelated look. So here we have some logic as we've learned around, learned about. The equal node we check is the mix at one and we check is the mix at zero. Either of these values, we don't want to have the pixelate effect on. So we put an or, so if equal to one or equal to zero, we bypass the pixelate. Here we pixelate at 9, 0.9 something and at one we're off and the same is here, we're off at zero. That's what this bit of logic is doing. Then we have the one minus X node here. We haven't covered this one yet. It's rather simple. It takes the number one and it minus, it subtracts the incoming value from it. So at, we're sending it a one right now. One minus one is zero. The other way around, uh, one minus zero is one. So this way we can turn one opacity down while the other one is um, turned up. Make sure it is set to, to mixer. And let's have a look how it looks in Arena. Here we have two clips. And now I have the, let's show the transition controls. We need that one. It's just an easy show. If we use it as a, a transition effect, we can now set it here. I renamed it to pixelate. Where are you? There. And now when I up this a little bit and transition between two clips, we get this pixelation effect. So I just made my own, fix, uh, uh, own transition effect. It can also be used as a blend mode. I can set it now to pixelate and pixelate it down. So mixers done. And that also wraps up this tutorial. You know now how to make a source, an effect, uh, and a mixer. So you should be pretty good to go by now, but more tutorials will follow. See you soon.